this program? And so how do you get around creating fiscal transparency in your organization? So, so, so we, are, we, we follow all of the guidelines like everybody else that, that we publish our audited financial statements um, as they were done. Uh, they're, they're both on our website and on Capital Revenue's website. But that really reduces accountability to accounting. And accountability is much more than accounting. So we, we allow and encourage, um, and in some cases um, insist, that donors follow their money through the organization. We don't accept designated funds, so all money that is given to us is for the purpose of providing nutritious lunches to children um, in the area of greatest need. So if we need to use that money to replace a freezer, we use the money to replace a freezer. If we need it to buy food, we use it to buy food. If we need it to pay part-time staff, we use it to pay part-time staff. But at the end of the day, the most transparent we can be is that if you divide the number of lunches produced into the, the total uh, expense line, we produce a completely nutritious lunch at less than a dollar a lunch. A lunch that meets the Canada Food Guide requirements and the unreported guide for schools. And it's not just because we have generous donors who provide financial support to the organization, it's also because we have generous suppliers who we've negotiated amazing arrangements. So we, we get 250 lugs of fresh baked whole grain bread from the Italian bakery, baked specifically for us, at, two, at 80 cents a loaf. If they bag that for any of their other um, clients, like Safeway, it's three or four bucks. So Louis at the Italian bakery is providing us with, with bread at less than its cost. Um, Jason at Chongo's Market, we buy all of our produce, um, 900 pounds a week. Chongos at 50 cents a pound year round. It doesn't matter whether we're taking bananas, oranges, apples, celery, carrots, tomatoes, uh, avocados, whatever whatever we take, we pay 50 cents a pound. Well, even apples in season, its delivery cost is higher than 50 cents a pound. My friends at Blessed Oak Yogurt, where we get farm fresh yogurt out of the home, uh, the delivery price here at our dock is less than the cost for Mountain Meadows. Produce this amazing product called pea butter uh, that is made from Alberta brown peas and only made in Alberta. Pea butter. Pea butter. Really? Um, that sounds like fun. <laughs> um, it, it, it's made from Alberta brown peas. It tastes exactly like peanut butter. Uh, in fact, Julie Van Rosendahl, the food critic for CBC, did a, a blind taste test on our behalf. Um, and she, she had just product. People spooned it into their mouths and, and she did pea butter cookies and peanut butter cookies number of parts and no one could tell the difference between the two products. So we can provide, and, and they provide us that, that product in 11 kilogram pails at a cost that's, that's cheaper than our wholesale is going to be. So when you say that no one could tell the difference between it, did you guys actually do a, uh, like a blind study? Like she a did a blind study. She did it yeah. and, and you just you and so she yeah, yeah, so we use her information. But but for us, it, 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 the, t the way that we do it is that this is our second most popular choice for a lunch that children are requesting. So it's it's pea butter and triple fruit jam sandwich. Um, when we are when we are providing that portion of the lunch, the sandwich, what we're looking for looking to do is is introduce the, the uh, protein that's missing from this children's uh, children's diet. So the four sandwiches that we provide um, that are chosen by the children and, and requested by the schools. So our relationship is with schools now. And that's intentional. Um, so uh, we have a meat and cheese sandwich. Uh, the meat is either ham or chick, uh, chicken. Uh, and the reason we have two is to meet dietary and religious restrictions. Tuna, sa tuna salad, egg salad, cookie butter, and, and turkey jam. And that really is, both, both, that's where we're introducing protein. Uh, the grains are introduced, and if, they, if they're having the Jam, they're getting some fruit, but, but down the menu, there's a choice of two pieces of fruit, a choice of two vegetables, a nutritious snack. Tuesdays, they get, you know, Wednesdays, they get fruit juice. And, and so we have every year find a way to increase the nutrition of the lunches and still maintain our lunch costs at less than the dollar for lunch. 
that is all constant, right? right? So this is, we've decided not to play the games that some organizations are, are playing where we subtract out certain costs as being administration or marketing or fundraising and then do the, 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 the calculation and come up with a 50 cent or a 70 cent. I don't even know what it would be. But we, we leave all of our costs in, so all of our salaries, all of our vehicle operations, all of our insurance, which is a huge, insurance is a huge part of our operation because in order to be in Calgary schools, we need to carry five million single incident um, comprehensive liability insurance, which is really expensive. Um, and to run an organization with that piece in it, our directors and officers insurance is really expensive. To get the what well, to get the food to the schools in a way that meets both our insurers and the school board's requirements, we need to operate our own vehicles and have part-time staff driving them. And so we have four vehicles that are that are insured uh, and they're used for commercial purposes. So the premium is, is very high. Um, but it's a cost of doing business. But all of those costs are are in the calculation. So uh, at the end of this school year, the, the, at the end of June, we just passed. We had delivered 678,000 lunches through the school year uh, at a cost of just under $500,000, all costs. So that's how we begin to demonstrate what we would see as a kind of real transparency. Um, because in the end, we believe people are looking for the result that is achieved. And that if, if, if I am paid a salary that is commensurate with what I would be making at another organization, similar size or a for-profit organization, but achieving results that are significantly greater. It's the results that people are looking for. Yeah. So, so we don't play the game. When we get asked what percentage of, of your expenses um, are administration, um, I say we don't do that calculation. Um, and it's not a relevant, uh, to me, it's not a relevant calculation. It's actually the wrong question. The right question is, what results are you achieving? And that's where, the, and, uh, if, if the people, I imagine people inherently ask that first question where they say, what results are there? And if they don't get the answer they're looking for or expecting, then the next question is, where, where's the money going? Yeah, I think, you're, I, I think your first question was right. People don't know what the, what the right question is. Yeah. Because we've been led down a number of paths because of, uh, of some incidents like, um, where did the money go in Haiti? Or, Why a report in the National Post last week showed why uh, the question that we're rising is why are there hundreds of executive directors working for charities in Canada whose salaries exceed three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year? Um, so you get a little bit of information and it forms a question. Um, I would ask, even at three hundred fifty thousand dollars, what results are they achieving? And are yeah. the results commensurate with the three hundred fifty thousand dollars? I don't care what an executive makes if the results that I need for my donation are being achieved. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we are a small organization um, that started in that started in nineteen ninety, but really shifted focus in two thousand and five. In two thousand and five, we were delivering three hundred nutritious lunches a week to, to street youth who we believed, who they believed, because I, just I wasn't here yet, who be they believed uh, weren't accessing adult services. In the end, I think we would, we would say that they were accessing adult services, and that the program that we were offering, like many programs that, be, that, that are offered by charities, um, are, is counterproductive to the mission of the organization. So it's said on the side of the van, <laughs> working to get kids off the street. But if you think about what we were doing, we were delivering 300 lunches to the street to, and giving them lunches to on the street to stay on the street. So yeah. I said we have to change the tag to working to keep kids on the street. In 05, there was there was this whole body of research that had been done by a number of organizations, including the City of Calgary and the United Way and, and Meals on Wheels and the Food Bank that, that suggested that there may be as many as 30,000 kids in Calgary who were hungry every day. Staggering, staggering, staggering them. And it changed how we then began looking at what we needed to do in 2005. I would, I would in hindsight say that number was wildly exaggerated, maybe tenfold wildly exaggerated. And, and 
but but when we were facing a possibility of 30,000 hungry kids, we needed to look for a schedule and delivery channel that was going to be efficient, and we chose the schools. Knowing what we know now, we may not we may not have gone that way. We may have gone directly to families, yep. which is what we're starting to do now. So. 2005, 300 nutritious lunches to youth on the street. At the end of the 2011, 2010-11 school year, uh, we were doing 15,000 nutritious lunches a week. We 90 schools. We have 70 community partners who are producing 1,800 lunches a day. Um, a strikingly different organization. And, but in 2005, when I joined the organization, there was a 3.6 full-time staff, 3.6 full-time staff equivalency. That's what we have to do. We haven't increased by one staff person, um, but the way that we have handled the, the necessary human resources is we use volunteers. And so uh, in 2010, the last full year that we've captured the data for, we had 3,000 volunteers come through our kitchen. Uh, 3,000 people who gave us four hours of their time uh, to come at 7.45 in the morning and stay until 11.30 and help us produce lunches for, for children. Almost all of them coming from downtown Calgary. Almost all of them going away and becoming an ambassador for what we do and how we do it. And, and those are the people that, that bring their organizations back and say, we want to contribute financially to the work that we do. In addition to contributing human resources, volunteer hours.